begin as we live in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate the sacred mysteries of Christ's love in the beginning of this Advent journey, as we seek peace and joy, as we prepare to receive our Lord in this Eucharist, let us first call to mind.
Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account for the grace of God bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in him you were enriched in every way, with all discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift, as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will keep you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by him you were called to fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
Not so sure how much that will happen this year, but nevertheless, the question will be asked. So, what do you want for Christmas? I think there's three categories that we can answer that question. There is the selfless answer, there's the practical answer, and there's also the universal answer. The, the first is the selfless one. All I want for Christmas is your love. Your love is enough for me. Just being with you, just sharing our faith, it is the wrapping paper on the box that's more important than any gift that you could buy me. The second is the practical gift. All I want for Christmas is my two front teeth. Now that's the most practical thing anyone could ask if you were a child and are toothless. To get your two front teeth, practical. The other practical gifts that we can get as well are those things that we would really like or need, but we don't want to spend our own money on. Those are the nice gifts to receive from somebody, that practical gift that we can use. And finally, the universal gift. All I want for Christmas is, like little Linus Van Pelt says in the Charlie Brown Christmas, all I want for Christmas is peace and goodwill to all men. How easy it is for us to think of the things that we would like, but yet there is only one gift I desire you to receive. All I want to give you for Christmas is the disposition of the Blessed Virgin Mary. When Jesus asks his disciples to keep watch and to stay awake, Mary becomes the perfect example of disposing yourself to that very moment. Remember, Mary is a part of the Adoween, the pious poor. Those of Israel who had put away the things of the world, the gifts for which we could possess, and allow themselves to wait in hope for the promise of the salvation to be fulfilled. It is in that disposition that Mary was prepared when the angel came and said, Behold, you will conceive a child in your womb, he will be the Messiah. She was prepared because of that disposition to be able to answer, I will be the handmaiden of the Lord. The disposition of Mary is the greatest gift that we can ask for in prayer, ask for in action as we await the coming of the Savior. So what should be our mission as we begin this Advent journey? I think it is to pay attention to how Mary is disposed to the will of God, disposed undistracted by the world around us, how difficult that is with all the lights, with all the shopping, with all the baking. Perhaps maybe this year it will be a little bit different, less distracted, because we're unsure of what Christmas will really be, how we will celebrate it. But the disposition of Mary would say to us, put aside those things and receive the gift of Jesus so that it may be the gift that you give. The gift of Jesus is truly a selfless gift. And that is the gift of faith. Faith is a selfless gift that one receives from Jesus. It's a gift that we receive that we know more than anything else what we desire is Him. Let us grow in faith in this Advent season through our prayer and worship. Use all the opportunities that you have that are presented to you as a parish family. The Little Blue Book is a perfect way to begin your day with a seven minute meditation and then end it with the same meditation to see how it affected you as you wait for the coming 
of Mary's child. Praying and reflecting, perhaps on the meditations that Father Ronyel will make available every day on Advent to look at it, to pray it, and to realize being selfless is allowing ourselves to step out into the faith for which comes from the little child. Secondly, our mission should be that of realizing that we want to receive Jesus and give him as a practical gift. The most practical way that we can prepare for the birth of Christ is how we allow others to see our disposition. Even if you end up going to the store, one of the things that you could do as you're checking out, you can say to those who are helping you, Merry Christmas. That will catch them off guard. And they may say, a Merry Christmas to you. And tell them, may God bless you in this season. It is those kinds of messages of the good news that gives us the hope that is the most practical gift. The hope of what comes next. Through the darkness, even through our anxieties, that the child who comes with no place to lay his head will become the great king of all kings. Another way is sending the cards. I don't send cards, mostly because I don't like making out the envelopes. But if you send the cards, send ones that send the greeting awaiting the coming of the Messiah. Beautiful cards of Mary and child, or the kings visiting, or the shepherds. Refrain from sending those cards that show Santa Claus riding on a motorcycle with a tree behind him, or the ones with the simply prickly leaves and season greetings. Allow it to be an invitation into hope for those that you love. And finally, Mary's disposition also allows us to share in the universal truth that we desire, like Linus. Peace on earth and goodwill to men. This is the act of love that is necessary. The little things that we can do, perhaps maybe picking up the phone and calling a neighbor or someone that we know that perhaps through this are lonely, to give them once again that sense of love that is Christ. I like to try to do little things to keep me in mind. For instance, I'm going to let you go first at the four-way stop. Patience. There's always a way to invite someone closer to our lives. I always try to be more patient during Advent, driving my truck. And mostly it's because I have a sticker on the back that says, Keep Christ in Christmas. And I certainly don't want to act like Scrooge if I'm trying to proclaim the gospel message. So let us, as we make our spiritual communion, seek the disposition of Mary. That the true selfless gift is that of faith that we embrace. The true practical gift is hope of knowing that we may be poor in spirit today so that we may be rich in the kingdom of God. And finally, the universal gift that allows us to bring peace because the disposition that we hold allows us to watch and to receive the King. And I promise I will do the same. Let us now stand and together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. 
begot not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. As we wait with Mary, in true peace, let us bring forth our prayers. Our response is, come quickly, Lord, in mercy come. For Pope Francis and all church leaders, that they have the courage to lead us to the peace we all yearn for, let us pray to the Lord. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy come. For all those suffering from natural disasters, violence, or poverty, let us pray to the Lord. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy come. That this special time of Advent may make us also aware of Jesus' second coming. That they will devote special time and energy to meeting the needs of others. Let us pray to the Lord. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy come. For all our faithful departed, that the purgative love of Jesus Christ will make them perfect in heaven as they look forward to the resurrection of the body. Let us pray to the Lord. Come, come quickly, quickly, Lord, in Amen. mercy come. Come quickly, Lord, in mercy come. Give us the disposition of Mary, your mother, so that we may keep watch at night, so that when you come, we will rejoice with you now, and then eternally in heaven forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness receive the bread we offer. Fruit to the earth, work of human hands, will come for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from all. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make, gather from among the gifts to us, and may what we grant in here the celebration of your divinity below may gain us a place of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. 
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the loneliness of the human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you fastened long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all at last is made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, and thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once again giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of
you say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. time, I would like to pray with you the prayer for a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
us at Thanksgiving, and it is that welcome of sharing our lives uh, that is so nice and so perfect for us who need the human touch, and this has been a difficult time. I know many did not go home or were unable to have visitors. Uh, we felt that here in both parishes that we can't be together, but that doesn't mean that we don't long uh, in that darkness uh, with that hope that we will, Mary's disposition, uh, not only prepare for the birth of Christ, but also our return to be together again when we are past this pandemic. As I mentioned in my homily, uh, it's important for us to really use the gift of faith supported by a prayer. Uh, we have plenty of the uh, little blue books and you can stop by the church is always open so you can come in and pick up a little blue book. We also have the Advent, Family Advent Kits. Uh, they're really cool. There's a, a beautiful little nativity set in there to build as a family. So please stop by, not only to pick those things up, but take some time to come into church and to pray as well. Remember next Sunday is the Feast of St. Nicholas, uh, so please stay tuned to Operation Safe Mode. We're gonna do a piece on St. Nicholas and I'm sure you're gonna enjoy that as well as uh, the other events that we have planned to make this a really special Advent season. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O oh Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to glorify Christ by your life. Thanks be to God.